Hello everybody, it's Farm Some Guy here. Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 and to Hope Bayeron. We are clearing this field here today because we're going to do a little tutorial on grapes and olives and how you can farm them and how you can use them in your production chains. So how do you uh, set yourself up? As you can see here, we have a field. Now, normal crops you would just plant in the ground. But what you need to do with grapes and olives is you need to get your, your vines put into the ground. Now, to do that, you go into the construction tools, like so. And we'll go all the way along to production, uh, and then to orchards. And in here, you will see grape vines, and you'll see olives. Now, I would say the process for both of these is almost identical. Uh, you get slightly different machinery, but other than that, the same process applies the whole time. Now, what you do is you find yourself a point on your map where you want things to go, and then you drop in your first vine point. Now, you can see when it was there, it's a distance too short. So what you want to do now is you can run this all the way down to the other end of your field. Now you'll see there's no way it's, it doesn't snap or move until you get exactly to the other end of a field. So um, if you are planting vines, my suggestion would be run them the entire length of the field. Um, so there we go, there's one. Um, now you can continue them on like so, or the other option is you can hit the escape button and then you can place your next one. Uh, so I'm going to do it about there. Now you can obviously, the closer together they are, the more you can fit into a field, which is uh, definitely helpful and practical. Uh, and like I said, when you get to the end of the field here, like so, it should snap again. And you can adjust it, it's not there, see? I don't know why it's not snapping, but I will take that. Now you can see the other vines here have gone red which tells me that uh, this is too close. So we'll try and get as close as we can and as straight as we can. But I think we're going to go for something like that. Let's just not make them red. There we go. And there's a second set of vines. Let's do a third one, just so we've got the third one in here. Right on the edge of the map. On the edge of the field, should I say. And we'll go all the way down to the bottom. So there we go, we have put three sets of vines in there. That will do us for now, just so we can get on with the tutorial. But let's just jump out of here. As you can see, no leaves on them, grass on the ground. They are your empty vines. So there is already uh, plants on there. You don't need to do any planting, but they now need to grow for a little while to improve their yield. So while they're doing that, we will jump over to the shop and we will have a look at the machinery that you need. Another great feature of Farming Simulator 22 is the fact that you don't have to work out for yourself which bits of machinery you need to purchase. So you can actually go into here and look at packs and it will give you all the pieces of machinery that you would need to do some grape harvesting. So we are gonna buy all of these and we'll work through them one by one in the order that we need them. Okay, so let's have a look at the machinery we've got. We've got this little Landini tractor, uh, as you can see, very narrow, fits in between the vines very nicely. Next to it here, we've got the new Holland grape harvester. As you can see, it runs over the vines and pulls the grapes off into the middle and stores them in these hoppers either side of the main machine. This here is for stripping the vines at the end of the season once you've taken the grapes off. We'll look at that in a little while. Again, a nice narrow little fertilizer sprayer there. A trailer, of course, for collecting your grapes up. Uh, and then here we've got a little mulcher. Um, what we do is cut the grass underneath the vines um, and that will uh, help them help the yield on them and what you'll do after you've cut that grass and it's sitting on the ground you can run this very small cultivator over it as well plow that grass back under and uh, it will help the yield and of course a couple of uh, bowsers of liquid fertilizer for the little sprayer here so without further ado we're going to skip forward a little bit of time so you can see the growth on the vines and we will come back and start working the vines 
So here we go. You can see now that we have moved on to the first stage of growth here with some small leaves on the vines and the grass has grown rather long underneath the vines. So what we're going to do, that gives us the opportunity to get the mulcher out and get that cut. So we'll jump into the tractor and we'll do that. So into the little Landini here, we will drive this around here and we will pick up our mulcher. There it is. Incredibly narrow. Uh, these little tractors are great as well. Brilliant bits of kit. So we'll reverse this back, get it hooked up and we will run it to the field. So power up the machine using the B button, V to drop it down as you would normally and you've basically got to run this as close as you can to the vines to get it to cut but as you can see we have got cut grass going behind us now there is collisions on these vines so if you get too close like I have done there you get a little bit stuck but you want to try and get as much of this uh, grass away from the vines as you can so we'll just run up and down here a few times until this is done but as you can see if you uh, leave your vines too wide um, you might have to do a double pass on some of your vines to make them uh, to get all, all the grass out from underneath them so be mindful when you're putting your vines down that you keep them as close together as possible um, but there we go we are just about to cut um, this grass down like I said ideally could have got a little bit closer in some cases but uh, for the purposes of the tutorial we'll leave it as it is and uh, we are done. So what we'll do, we'll lift our little mulcher up and we will run him back to the store and we will get our uh, cultivator. Now here we are back at the field. Now I think it's going to be very interesting when we get a tool like guidance steering how it's going to affect things. So there we go, we've dropped it into the ground and we're just going to roll forward now you can see the grass that hasn't been mulched isn't being removed. Uh, we've just got that uh, lower grass showing through there. So um, what it's doing is it's ploughing in the cut grass but not doing anything with the grass that's already there. So we will run over this as quickly as we can, get it all covered off and then we will take things from there. So there we go, running down the last pass here, getting this last bit of mulched grass turned back under into the soil, which will help fertilise it and help the grapes grow. Um, when we're done here, what we'll do is advance it again to another growth stage, and then we'll jump in the sprayer and we will do that. So there you can see, uh, like I said, uh, I wasn't particularly accurate with my... Uh, mowing although further up here i think i did manage to get both sides of the uh, vines so you can see there that's how you really want to be doing and that is really hugging the uh, vines as close as you can i could potentially have planted these vines ever so slightly closer together as well which would have helped with that as well but that's your best bet if you can get both sides of the vine uh, that is your best option for not having to run multiple times up and down the rows as you can see on this side absolutely terrible now it is worth saying just before we move forward another little bit you can see now if I look at the field info in the bottom right hand corner there it's saying that it's already fertilized 48% so 50% um, so what we're saying is that that grass that has been cultivated back under is giving us one round of fertilization which is great uh, and obviously if we skip forward another growth stage it will give us the second uh, fertilization state when we spray it now what I would say is don't do it at the same time that you do the other stuff because it won't register you would need to advance another growth stage for the second fertilization to register so uh, we will jump forward to the next growth stage so there we go folks we've actually skipped forward two days and uh, you'll see the second stage of growth here as you can see there You've got some baby grapes starting to grow and if you jump into the mini map here you can see that we have our grapes you can see the color of them you can also see here there's um, the green bar going from light green to dark green for the growing stages separated into eight chunks so it's a very gradual process of going from light green to dark green so as you can see here we are around about 
the middle or ever so slightly more towards the fully grown stage but um, it will take I would say probably eight days in total uh, to work through this cycle obviously if you're not in seasons if you're in seasons they will uh, be ripe at the appropriate time within the calendar but they're looking good what we're going to do now we will run this back to the shop we'll get our little sprayer filled up and we will spray that second stage of uh, fertilization there we go a little hardy sprayer we will the tractor around to here get it filled up again just using the R button we can fill it up there we go one Bowser takes 50% and the second one here so we're holding 4,000 litres in the sprayer which is nice and we will virtually use none of it in this field but there we go full sprayer let's run it down to the field uh, the local wildlife Paying us a visit there. Three deers. We'll nickname one of them John. John Deer. I'm sure that's uh, a name I've heard before. Um, now, with the sprayer, it's interesting. It's got this air fan on the back of it. So what I'm going to do, I don't need to run down the outside lane here. Because you will see when we turn this on, that it is in fact going to cover two of the vines. So let me just roll to here. I will turn it on. And as you can see, it's covering quite a wide distance. So we'll just get these sprayed, which won't take long at all. And then we'll come back and we'll uh, just show you what's changed. So there we go. We've just finished the spraying there. B to turn the sprayer off. And if we jump out, and head back into here you will see now fertilized 100% so we are going to maximize our yield now with the crop because we have sprayed it appropriately so that is all you need there that they're, they're the three stages basically mulch the grass make sure then you cultivate that in and then once you've done another growth stage you can then spray them ready for harvest. So these should just grow now and ripen. So what we'll do, we'll skip forward another few days until they are almost ready. So here we go again. We skip forward another two days and we come back and this is what they look like now. You can see these lovely dark grapes, lovely full vines. And if we jump into our minimap here, you can see they have turned the orange of ready to harvest so with that in mind we shall go and get the harvester and probably a trailer as well and we will start to harvest them now as well as our little landini here i have just purchased another tractor this deutsch because we uh, are going to hook it up to the trailer here and the reason for doing this is the grape processing plant is quite a long way from the field so this does 60 kilometers an hour so with that in mind that will just help cut the amount of time down from when we uh, harvest the grapes to when we get them into the production point so let's hook this up let's move him down to the field and then we'll get the harvester okay here we are on the harvester very straightforward process for this very much like a combine actually you roll up to the vine um, and like I said, you can see the actual run the vine through the middle of the machine, which strips the grapes off. So basically you line yourself up like so. You've got to unfold it like a combine too, so just the X button to unfold things. Now you have to get this pretty accurate or you do get stuck on the vines quite regularly. So I'm slightly off centre there. I'm kind of hoping there's enough space for me to pull onto that, but we'll see. Uh, so power it up as you would a combine using the B button and then you just pull onto the vine and as you can see we are gathering them into the hopper we have got 55 litres now and it starts to throw a, a chaff out of the back and you can see the grapes dropping onto those conveyor belts there um, now, like I said, it's quite easy to get stuck here. One advice, piece of advice I've learned, if you see those two bars in the middle, just uh, behind the cab, 
if you line those up in the center with your uh, vine you will be able to keep things quite steady and this is running at eight miles an hour so uh, it's looking good it's coming to the end of the day here as well so we'll turn the lights on but there we go not a huge capacity in this you uh, would have a massive field of grapes you might want to run a few of these now what I will say all of this equipment the um, the small Landini tractor with the, the tools and this do not work with hired workers because of the collisions on the vines at the moment these not do not work with hired workers now, for example if I press the H button now what it does it loads up the hired workers menu and it will only let them set a destination even if I click, click create job it doesn't give them the option for field work so we are stuck for now doing this manually which isn't the end of the world because it's actually quite a fun process so we'll keep going with this get all these harvested like I said it's about to go dark so we'll then head back in the morning when things are a bit lighter and uh, get things loaded up and off to the production point so there we go, end of harvest. We will call it there, I will power it down so we can move it back to the trailer. Uh, but we roll over to the trailer here, we'll get it tipped out, and then in the morning we'll run it up to the production point. But very straightforward, just strip the grapes from the vines and dump them into your trailer. So you basically reverse up as you would if you were tipping a trailer and you transfer one to the other. As you can see, a uh, little notification at the bottom arrives and there go your bunches of grapes into your trailer. Here we are climbing the hill out of the town and just at the top of the hill here is the grape production point. Now one important thing you must consider if you're going to use a production point is that you need to purchase it first. Now you don't have to, you could sell your grapes directly and not worry about productions, but I thought I'd show you the wider uh, concept uh, of production chains tied in with the harvest of the grapes. So what we'll do is we'll just pull in here, you can see the tip point there based on the icon, so we will reverse up here and we will get ready to tip. Now I will say, like I said, make sure you purchase it. Now you can do that by walking up to here and pressing R if you don't already own it. I do own it. So you can see now our two outputs here are raisins and grape juice. I'm going to produce both. Um, but what you can do if you don't want to produce one is click on raisins, deactivate it, and you will only produce grape juice. Um, so there we go and it's saying at the moment materials are missing so what it's saying is we need 90 grapes in terms of liters to produce 72 liters of grape juice and for raisins it's a one for one ratio and likewise just to prove the point here if you just wanted to sell your grapes you can sell them at the farm shop or marison there for different values or you get obviously half the price for them selling them at the grape processing unit However, down here, if you produce your grape juice, there it is, and your raisins, you can see the prices there. Only sell them at one point here, so Le Jardin de Fermier's Farm Shop, the Garden Farmer's Shop, uh, 2,000 euros there for raisins and 3,500 euros for grape juice. So, quite a hike in prices, quite a hike in prices. So there we go. If you tipped into here, it would accept it. So um, if you didn't own the production point, you would lose those grapes if you weren't careful. Um, you would just sell them and they would disappear. And the price was pretty bad for them, wasn't it? 700 euros rather than double that if you sold them to the farm shop. So you don't want to be selling them to the production point without owning it. If you want to check how your productions are going on the map, Anywhere on the map you just hit the escape button, you go down to this icon here, which looks like a conveyor belt, click on that, 
it will show you all the production chains you own so if i had owned any others they would appear down here as well but as we've only got the great processing unit at the moment you can see how things are performing we are currently storing 191 liters just jumped up there to 228 liters so you know it's processing uh, and we've got 862 liters left so we'll let that run until it's all been converted and we will go and collect it and we will go and sell it so what we'll do we'll have a look at the prices here and just confirm that there is where we will sell it so here we are back at the grape processing plant we will just reverse in here as you can see there we have nice three pallets of grapes I shall unfold the car and jump out we walk up to it here and we pick up because we have got the super strength mod installed already just for the purposes of this demo we will pick this up there we go we can only fit two in here so that will do I'll close that up put the straps on it as well just to be on the safe side now we only need to head around the corner in fact we can nip down this road here and we can sell these directly to the farm shop now as you can see here grape juice is not accepted um, so there is a second sell point just around here for the grape juice and as I pull over it you can see it starting to disappear we can remove the straps now and as it sells the pallets will disappear and we will make ourselves 3,000 euros very nice and there we go we can just pull out of here and head back to the farm Okay, now we saw the grapes and we've made a bit of money. We need to head back to the farm because there's one last stage that we need to get sorted before the end of the season. And that is to strip the vines and prepare them for the following year. So let's just head back to the shop and we will get things sorted. So here we are back at the shop. We're going to jump back into our Landini here and grab our final piece of equipment which is just over here. I'll just drive round to the back of it and connect up to it. But this is our, um, I don't know what you would call it, stripping machine. It basically strips the vines of their leaves. So we'll go and uh, sort those now. As you can see, the vines have died. They've gone all brown after they've been harvested. Uh, and the leaves have died back. So what we need to do is strip them in preparation for the following season so you just again pull up in front like so um, and we power up and we need to unfold it first there we go which moves it a little bit further away from the tractor and we fire it up and as you can see it starts to strip the vines down and they are all stripped and ready for the start of the next season. And that is that. So our stages are place your vines using the building tools. Once they have gone through one growth stage, the grass will grow long. You want to mulch that grass and you can cultivate that into the ground. The stage after that uh, and again you'll have to let them move on another growth stage before you process it but uh, that is when you will spray them with liquid fertilizer using that specific little sprayer that air fan sprayer um, once that is done and you are fertilized 100 percent you leave them to grow to their full maturity at which point you can begin to harvest them using the harvester um, and then you can do whatever you want with the product you can choose to sell it as raw grapes or use the production plants uh, to make different things and then finally you need to come back after you've sold your product and strip your vines in preparation for the next season so there you go that is a very uh, quick whistle stop tour of how grapes and olives work like I said at the start the process is exactly the same for olives as it is for grapes. 
give or take a few little uh, differences but in principle you get exactly the same process to work with and uh, it's really really fun I have to say I have to say it brings a whole different experience uh, than just normal arable farming so I strongly recommend you give it a go strongly recommend you give it a go but for now from me the farm sim guy I hope that was useful I'd love to hear in the comments what else you'd like to see um, to get your head around and let me help you understand as part of FS22 especially if you're new players um, but for now I hope you found that useful and I will see you all again very soon bye for now <laughs>